Survival analysis, also known as time to event analysis, is an indispensable research method for health economists. This type of analysis is often performed using R, which can be really intimidating if you're not used to programming languages. That's why in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can do your first survival analysis in R, even if you're a total beginner and you've never coded before. Follow along to see how you can calculate survival times, generate couple on Maya plots, and conduct between group analysis using a Cox regression model. Are you ready? Before we get started though, we need to do two things. First, we need to install the latest version of R. At the time of recording, the most recent version of R is version 4.4.3, which you can download for free from the link in the video description. Second, we need to install R Studio. R Studio is what's known as an Integrated Development Environment, or IDE. The purpose for using R Studio is to make our lives easier by adding a simple interface that allows us to interact with the R programming language. You can think of R as the engine of our car, while R Studio is our steering wheel, gas, brake, gearbox, and all the other controls we use to drive our car. You can install R Studio for free via the link in the video description, and with that, we're almost ready to go. I say almost, because one thing you absolutely must do to feel like you're a true coder is to change R Studio to a dark mode by clicking on Tools, navigate to Global Options, and then click on Appearance. From here, you can select your editor theme and change it to something like Clouds Midnight or Tomorrow Night 80s. My personal favorite is the pastel on dark theme. Now that we found an aesthetically pleasing theme, we can start by creating a new R script by clicking on File, New File, and R script. Our new R script then appears in the top left corner, which is also known as the source pane. This is where we write and edit our code and keep track of the commands we're using. As you can see, apart from the source pane, there are three other panes in RStudio. The control pane, which we can use to run code. The environment pane, which displays currently saved R objects. Just think of them as variables that store data and the output pane, where we will later see the kaplan Meyer plot that we're about to generate. We're mainly going to work with our script in the source pane and a little with the control pane, so don't worry too much about the other two for now. To run our survival analysis, we first need to install and load several packages into R. Think of R packages like inspector gadgets tools. Each package is a specific gadget designed for tasks like data manipulation, visualization, or statistical analysis. By installing and loading these packages, you're equipping yourself with the tools needed for the task at hand. I'm assuming that you've never used R before, so you'll need to install all these packages that you can see on screen. You can install these packages using the install.packages command and simply highlight the code in your script and then click on run to execute it. Once you've installed all these packages, the next thing you want to do is load them into R to make them available for your R session. You can achieve this by using the library command with the package name in parentheses. With your packages loaded into R, we can now take a closer look at our example dataset. For this tutorial, I'm following an online guide written by Emily Craig Zaber, who has a PhD in statistical methods. You can find a link to her website in the video description from where you can copy paste the R commands that we're going to use in this tutorial so you don't have to write a single line of code yourself. The dataset we're going to use is the lung data set from the survival package, which contains subjects with advanced lung cancer. To make things simple, we're going to focus on only three variables for today. Time, which is the observed survival time and days. Status, which contains information on censoring, whereby one equals censored and two equals dead. And sex, where males are coded as one and females are coded as two. Before we continue, let me briefly pause here to talk about censoring, given that this is crucial for our tutorial. Imagine I was interested in studying how long it takes for people to get bored of watching one of my videos. I start by timing each viewer from the beginning of my video. However, not everyone gets bored during the video. I know chances are slim, but some might actually stay engaged until the end. For those who don't get bored by the end of the video, their time to get bored is unknown. This is called right censoring because the event, getting bored, hasn't occurred by the end of the observation period. We run into the same issue with our lung cancer data. If a subject has not experienced the event of interest, which is death in this case, by the end of the data collection period, we need to censor their observation. There are other examples for this kinds of censoring too, such as loss to follow up or withdrawal from the study. 
That's why we need to account for censoring when we do survival analysis, as otherwise we risk getting incorrect results. In the lung example, the censoring data is captured in the status variable, but it is coded in a non-standard way, so let's change that. Typically, events are coded as 1 and censored observations are coded as 0. However, in our case, censored events are coded as 1 and our event of interest, death, is coded as 2. Using this bit of code, we can recode our data to follow the conventional format. To check that this was successful, we can use this line of code to inspect our first six observations. If you see these numbers on your control pane, then you're ready to move to the next step. The lung data set doesn't give us pre-calculated survival times, so we'll have to calculate them ourselves. What we have are start and end dates, so we can calculate the difference between both. Before we do this, we should check how our dates are formatted in R. Using this code, we can create a small example dataset with SX date for surgery date and last FUP date for the last follow-up date. As we can see in our command line, both these variables are character variables, so we need to change them to date variables, which we achieve by using this bit of code. Looking at our console again, we see that our start and end variables have been successfully reformatted as dates. With both dates now properly formatted, we can create a new variable named OS years to present the observed OS time in years, which we're going to use in our survival analysis later. Next, we're going to create a survival object by using the serve function from the survival package. The serve function thereby takes time and event status as arguments to create the survival object. I'm aware this sounds very theoretical, so let's have a look at what this function spits out when we run it for the first 10 observations in the lung dataset using this code. What you can see in the command pane is one entry for each subject, giving us survival time followed by a plus sign if the subject was censored. This means that subjects 3 and 6 were censored at day 1010 and 1022 respectively, while all other subjects died. Moving on, we can use the servit function in R to compute an estimate of our survival curve using the Kaplan-Meier method. This code generates the overall survival curve from the entire cohort and assigns it to object S1. We can then display its structure using the str command, where I'd like to focus on two components. The first one is time. This represents the time points at which the curve has a step. So in other words, the time points where at least one event occurred. The second one is serve, which gives us the estimate of survival at the corresponding time. As observed in our command pane, this value steadily decreases over time, which is expected since more patients die as time progresses and no one miraculously returns from the dead. Next up, we can create our Kaplan-Meier plot using ggsurfit. Simply copy this code into your R script, run it, and voila, you have a Kaplan-Meier plot. To make the plot look more similar to what you might find in a peer-reviewed journal, we can add the confidence interval using this command, which adds this gray shade to our plot. The last piece that's missing now for our plot to be ready is to add the number at risk below the x-axis, which we achieve using the at risk table command. If you want to make the KM curve pop a bit more on screen, you can change the dull gray to a color of your choice, for example like this. Now that we've plotted our KM curve and adjusted it to our liking, the next thing we're interested in when doing survival analysis is to estimate the probability of surviving beyond a certain number of years, which we can label x. We may choose any number for x, but typical time points include 1, 3, 5 or 10 year survival. In our example, we look at an advanced type of lung cancer, so long-term survival predictions aren't great, which is why I'm going to focus on the 1 year survival probability. Here you can see me use the summary function with the times argument set to 365.25, given that our data is recorded in days rather than years. Looking at the command pane, we can see that our one year survival probability is just under 41%, which corresponds to this point on our KM curve. If you'd like to, you can create a sleek looking table for the one year survival probability using this code, which will appear in the output pane. Imagine for a second that we had used a naive estimate to calculate our one year survival probability. By that, I mean that the patients who were censored prior to one year are considered event free and included in the denominator. We know that 121 patients in the lung dataset died by year one, and the dataset consists of 228 patients. So our naive estimate would be 47%. Remember that the correct estimate was 41%, which accounted for censoring using the Kaplan-Meier method. 
These two numbers are vastly different, which is why this is such an important learning point. Ignoring censoring leads to an overestimate of the overall survival probability by falsely treating patients who are censored as part of the risk set for the entire follow-up period. That's why we need to apply statistical techniques, such as the Kaplan-Meier method, to account for censoring when we conduct survival analysis. Just as using naive estimates for survival analysis would be unwise, it would also be unwise not to look at median survival time. Median survival, or in other words, the time it takes for 50% of patients to have died, is a common metric reported in survival analysis. Luckily for us, we can obtain the median survival directly from the surveyed object already set up by using this code. As we can see, the median survival time for patients in the lung dataset is 310 days, which we can present in a simple table like this one using only a few lines of code. Just like we did with the one-year survival, we can represent the median survival visually using this point on our KM curve. Like in our one-year survival example from before, we get incorrect results for median survival if we simply summarize the median survival time among the 165 patients who died, ignoring the fact that censored patients also contribute follow-up time. Using this flawed approach, our median survival is 226 days, as opposed to the correct estimate of 310 days. This leads to an underestimate of the median survival time because the follow-up time that censored patients contribute is excluded. Let's shift gears a bit and look at survival of individual groups and how they compare, rather than looking at the entire patient cohort as a whole. For example, we can assess whether there was a difference in the survival time for males and females in the lung data set by using the sex variable. To tell whether the sex variable plays a role, we can use the log rank test to conduct between group significance tests using this line of code. As we can see, our p-value is significant, which means that there was a significant difference in overall survival according to sex in the lung data. If we wanted to quantify the effect size for the sex variable, we could do so using what's known as a Cox regression model. The Cox regression model, also known as the Cox proportional hazards model, is a statistical method used in survival analysis to examine the relationship between the survival time of individuals and one or more predictor variables. In our case, the predictor variable that we're interested in is sex, given that we already know that there is a significant difference as per the log rank test. Using this function, we can fit regression models for our survival data, which returns estimates in our control pane. To tidy up, we can put this into a clean table using this code, whereby we set the exponentiate option to true to return the hazard ratio rather than the log hazard ratio. Looking at this hazard ratio, we see that females die less often than males. More specifically, females are 41% less likely to die than males in this dataset. As you can see, running survival analysis like this in R isn't difficult, and even total beginners without any coding experience can do it. I know we've covered a lot today, but what I haven't shown you yet is how you can do survival extrapolation in R so that you can make long-term predictions beyond your observed Kaplan-Meier data. Luckily, I've already made a video where I explain how you can use a platform called Servant to generate parametric survival extrapolations in just a few minutes. You can see the video on screen right now, so go watch that one next.